fish on. Well, it's the 1st of May and uh, it's our bream competition and it's also the South Sea Marina's open, bream open comp. And to be fair, for the best part of the morning, it's been quiet. It's not been good at all. But we thought we'd stick on this spot and I'm glad we did because the tide's just moving around and we're finally getting bites. So, uh, there we go. Oh, yeah, this looks like a re reasonable bream. My mate's going to net him. There we go. It's probably the best one of the day. Uh, so far, he'll do nicely. Lovely. Very, very nice fish. Look at that. He'll do. I can uh, make a meal of it, but yeah, lovely. Look at that. He will do nicely. That's the best fish of the day so far. I'd like bigger, because I'm like all fishermen, I'm very greedy. Well, there's my uh, rigs. I've made them up uh, yesterday. And I'll unwind one. Try not to catch me uh, fingers on these little sharp hooks. Good little hooks these are. Ever since I've gone over to these, I seem to have improved my hookup rate considerably. So, uh, people who know me no normally know I don't like two hook rigs. I think I've got a fish on that one as well. Um, but for bream, I do make a bit of an exception. And uh, as I showed you earlier, it's literally a small strong swivel, 30 pound line, I've just tried to drop her there. And uh, one on the end, pop-ups, two little red beads. Where it makes a difference or not, I don't know. I do not think the pop-ups do, I think that <coughs> little bit of fluttering that bait around. Talking of bait, cutlins and squid, and it does seem to be the squid that's doing the damage. So I particularly like a squid head but that alone will get ripped off quite easy. But some of the bigger fish do seem to prefer a squid head or half a head. I think I've had most of my big biggest bream on a squid head, so it's a very favoured bait. But literally squid head and then a few strips of squid, and that seems to be doing the damage today. So I'll uh, I'll get this loaded up and uh, We'll have it out. I've got two types of rig. I did have a Paternoster, um, but I've gone over to this running ledger because it seems to, as this tide's easing down, it seems to be the one that's catching the uh, the fish. So we'll just whack that on the end, put it on the right one. Because before now, I've <clears throat> I've put the uh, bait on the <laughs> on there. <laughs> it's not what you want. And the weight on the other end, just not really paying attention, but not today. Anyway, weight wise, what have we got? I'm using quite a heavy weight to be fair, because I've that is not a lot of um, movement in the water at this current time. I want to be nailed on the bottom, and it does seem to be doing the doing the business, so there we go. Let's give that a quick flick, just literally out the side of the boat there. I'm not gonna go far. Let it hit the bottom. We're about 50 feet, I think. That's the bottom there. Lift and drop again. Engage that, clicker on. There we go. Very lightly set drag. And hopefully, they hook themselves. Now this one was bouncing around a minute ago and it stopped. Now that suggests I've been robbed of bait or there is a fish on. Uh, yeah, there's a fish there. I don't feel very breamy this time. Oh, it might be a small one. We've had a few eels. They really aren't much fun when you're trying to uh, fish for smaller things like bream. They just mess your rigs up. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's another bream. Yeah, it's another pretty male fish. Thanks, Grant. Fisherman will make Grant there, look, he's going to have a... <laughs> Turn around and don't give us a smile, Grant, yeah. but you can no, see that... It's like a join in the, join in the party. <laughs> yeah, it's gone a bit quiet, it was the other way around earlier, Grant was catching the fish and I, was, I wasn't. Nice but, sound on the spinning rod. But look at that, I mean, he's actually hooked under the chin, but them little chinoo hooks they're called, they're great. Beautiful fish, look at the markings on that. Anyway, he can uh, go, wow. He flew down. Right, bait up, back out. 
Well, Grant um, changed his rig to a pop-up, and uh, as you can see by that rod there, this has literally just gone out. It's the pop-ups that are definitely, definitely doing the business, because there's a fish Grant's got. Um, he's managed to come round. But yeah, looks like a reasonable fish there, Grant. Do you want to lift him? Or do you want to net him? Lift him. Yeah, look, look at that, lovely male fish again. They all seem to be males. Um, lift them over mine, brilliant. Very nice, now the boat looks a bit of a mess, people, but we've got a lot of stuff on board today. And finally, finally, we are getting into the fish, because, uh, lovely, he'll do. So yeah, it's happening. So it's about, I don't know what time it is, what it's gotta be about midday, Grant, isn't it, half 12? Yeah, I feel, and um, as I mentioned earlier, this morning was was painful. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. Just really, really slow. But it's happening now, and we were going to move. I'm not going to lie, we were. This is this is the third spot we've been on actually. Um, but at least we did get boats here almost straight away. There we go, another lovely fish. These these little looks. I'll tell you what, they up the catch rate. Believe you me, they do. He can go back because actually at the moment now, unless I get anything bigger than what I've already got, I can all go back. Because as I say, we are in a comp. But uh, right, what well, a fish are biting. Let's get out there again. Right, well we're bream fishing. Um, it's been quiet, if I'm honest. But in amongst the bream, look at that. That is a handsome, handsome fish. Male cuckoo wrasse. I mean, look at the fins. Just iridescent markings on him. He's coughed up, look, a smaller fish there that he's been a uh, goby, I'd say that is, of some sort. But I'm gonna get him back because they're not the toughest fish, but wow, what a what a handsome, handsome thing. Right, see you later, mate. Right. Okay, well, finally I'm getting some nice fish. I lost a better fish than this, so much better, but uh, that's fishing. A bit gutted. Grant had a, a very nice another lovely cuckoo wrasse. Took some photos of that, so I'll see if I can put them on the film. But yeah, um, you can see boats behind us, they're all pulling away now, it's time to go. So I think this is the last one, worthy of uh, any pictures. But yeah, it's been okay, we should have came here first. <laughs> but there you go, that's fishing. Right, we'll see who's won when we get back to the, uh, to the slipway. Okay, out of the day with my mate Tim, there he is. Uh, a bit camera, sh bit ca bit camera shy because he has got a face for radio, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So we're out on Tim's boat, Jumbo. Um, we're on the Breen Grounds, uh, sort of off Bogner, over the distance there. You can see the the uh, circus or whatever you want to call it, the Butlins. At least I think it's Butlins. Yeah, it's Butlins. Yeah, it's Butlins. Tim's just told me. Anyway, we've had a few Bream, and uh, here we go. So hopefully we're we'll gonna few more like this because. Um, Barbecue weather, as you can see, absolutely beautiful weather. Um, we're not on our own here. Boat over there drifting. I thought he was going to anchor behind us, but thankfully he's drifting. There's another ECA boat over there, that's my mate Tommy. And uh, as you can see, quite a few boats over all around us and in the distance. So, yeah, good start. Boat straight away. We've only been here literally, what, half hour? Must have had, uh, how many fish, Tim? Must have had a good dozen. Yeah, dozen. Yeah. So yeah, just getting a few taps on my rod there. And uh, I say in the distance there, I've got a float out with a, with a water wolf on it. So see what the bottom looks like, if I don't lose it. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Let's have some more Anyway, in. there you go. Tim's in again. Look, this is how quick it is in live action. So we'll see this fish. Oh, hang on, so double it. Oh yeah, look, look at, at that. that. Beautiful cuckoo wrasse. Look at that, we're getting a few of these on this ground. I mean, look at them. You're getting in the sunshine. Wow, we. I mean, what a lovely, they're so, so. I mean, that would not look out of place in an aquarium. And that's Tim's normal stunt <laughs> fish there. <laughs> that is bass bait. <laughs> that is a good bass bait, actually. So, excuse me a minute, because I'm going to dig my hands in here. This bream's still kicking around on I do normally uh, dispatch fish. 
bear with me one moment. A bit awkward. So that's what um, that's what we've been catching, and then we'd like a few more like that, even bigger if we can uh, get them. But yeah, I'd say he's a he's a very nice fish. But I'm going to dispatch him because uh, we're taking a few home for dinner, and uh, a few more to come. Right, see you in a bit. Well, there you go, another nice one. Look at him, absolutely bristling, beautiful markings. Fabulous, fabulous. They're, they're such nice fish, Bream. They really are. We're very, very lucky down here to have these you know, magnificent fighting fish as well for their size. So, yeah, more than happy. The boat's come on again. Went a bit slow for about half an hour, but uh, we just had a couple of cracking bites coming out in this fish. So, right, here we go. Getting them baits out. Well, I'm glad we didn't leave because. Uh, we were considering moving and I'm really glad we didn't because <coughs> that is what we're looking for. Double it of lovely, lovely fish there. That bottom one's a particularly nice one. So yeah. I've got your other line. That's right. Anyway, they're on the feed. We want that elusive four pound pluser. And wouldn't that be nice? 